Mark Ropers, welcome. Thanks for having me, Barry. So the allegation there is that Labor tried to muddy the waters, that you loaded up the list with, with coalition MPs when the case against them is flimsy at best. Uh, I found that an extraordinary outburst. We've had a lot of that from Malcolm Turnbull this week, bordering on unhinged. Let's think about this, Barry. We've got chaos, a mess. It's been going on since June and every parliamentarian should be focused on restoring the confidence of the Australian people in the constitutional legitimacy of our parliament. And that's what Labor and the crossbenchers agreed on with this motion. We referred four of our own, a crossbencher, Rebecca Sharkey, and four Liberals. And regrettably, the vote was tied 73 all, and the government, by voting against it, has guaranteed that the uncertainty and the lack of confidence is going to go on right through the summer. All right, that's a reasonable argument if you actually had a case against any of these four, but they say there is no case. Well, we say there's no case against the people that have been identified on the Labor side. Uh, Mr Feeney's in a different category because he can't find... He's dealt with his Irish citizenship, but he can't find the papers for his British citizenship. And so we've referred him anyway because he asked to be referred to the High Court. But the other three, we say they took reasonable steps. Well, we'll come, and we'll there's come a disagreement on the law, Barry, between the government and the opposition. But, but let's the... talk about those you've named on the coalition side. Then we'll come back to, to, sure. to those on your side. Um, Nola Marino, for one. Now, she has produced a letter from Italian authorities saying she did not have Italian citizenship. Why is that not good enough? Not, and this is the point. Um, only Malcolm Turnbull really could have managed to, to, to convert what was meant to be a disclosure system into a concealment system. Nola Marino produced that after her initial disclosure because we've uh, referred to a list of coalition MPs that we say didn't make proper disclosure. And she's still not dealt with, sorry to go to the detail, but she's still not dealt with her US citizenship issue. And why we set up this disclosure system, Labor suggested it, the government went along with it, was to put to rest all of the doubts and suspicions that have been raised, some by barristers, some by journalists, since June, this has been going on, Barry, and we've got to sort it out. So Nola Marino hasn't dealt with her US citizenship issue and neither have the other coalition MPs that we've referred to dealt with properly the doubts that have been raised. Now, David Feeney, um, do you, you can see, though, without that document, he's in trouble. We don't know what the High Court's going to make of the situation he finds himself in. Uh, it's a demonstration of the thought that was put in that he knows exactly what uh, was required to be done in 2007 when he joined the parliament and his problem is that while he can locate a document relating to the uh, Irish citizenship that he may have had he can't find uh, necessary documents in relation to the other citizenship and we'll see what the High Court does and with And he that. would have known that all the way through this debate wouldn't he that there was a missing document? I, I can't speak for David uh, but it's perhaps significant that he's one of almost a hundred Labor MPs uh, who's got this difficulty and for everybody else uh, they've been through this rigorous system as did David and uh, we think that they are okay. But it only took one to blow apart Bill Shorten's holier than thou argument up until now. I, I was standing next to Bill when he was asked about this in a bit of the press conference you showed just a moment ago and he uh, very frankly said uh, that had he known then when he said, when he expressed the complete confidence, he obviously wouldn't have said it. He would have chosen his words more carefully. Well, if David Feeney was to lose his spot, would he be pre-selected for, for the, uh, the by-election? I think we're getting a bit ahead of ourselves there, Barry. We've got to see what the High Court says first, and I'm not going to make the mistake the Prime Minister made uh, of predicting confidently what the High Court's going to do. Well, what about the politics of it? Though it'd be hard to, to hold that seat, wouldn't it, given what happened in the North I'm, I'm not going to get. I'm not going to get ahead of ourselves, Barry. All right, Katie Geller, how do you feel about the, the ACT uh, Labor Senator? How do you feel about her prospects? Uh, we think that Katie Gallagher took the reasonable steps that the High Court has spoken of in repeated decisions. And, and may, when you think about it, Barry... Well, why has she referred herself if, if you think she's got a good chance of winning it? Because she, like the rest of us in Labor, care about the constitutional legitimacy of the Australian Parliament. We want this cleared up. We want this mess to end. And as you heard Katie saying in the Senate, she believes that she's got a clear case that she was eligible to stand for Parliament, 
but she wants it cleared up and the High Court will clear this up. We are confident uh, that she has taken the reasonable steps that British law required because that's what this is always about, it's about the foreign law and we'll see because the High Court's going to deal with this in February. And, and when they do, do you see that as a precedent for the others, for the other Labor members named? Not really, Barry. The, each case is, has to be determined on the particular circumstances uh, of the candidate or member concerned and uh, Josh Wilson's a different case again. He, he was pre-selected the day before nominations closed. Mm. He knows he's a dual citizen. He hadn't thought he was going to be a candidate. You might recall that uh, we ended the candidacy of our previous pre-selected candidate for Fremantle. He did everything possible as quickly as he possibly could, but he only had 24 hours. He sends off all of the papers. The government's suggesting that uh, he wasn't eligible. And we say, on what the High Court's very clearly said, he was eligible because he took the reasonable steps. Yeah, now in his case, I can see that you take the reasonable step, but at what point, he had no, no early opportunity to do it, but Justine Kay did. She was pre-selected 12 months out or something. It took 12 months before she got around to starting the process. Will that be an issue? Well, that's making the, the point court. that each person's circumstances are a little bit different or even a lot different. Yeah, but it's... does that make her situation more difficult? Because uh, she I didn't... I don't believe to... it does, but that's our view. Um, we th we've got advice from a British expert, British barrister, who's expert in nationality, British nationality law, and we believe on the basis of that that she and all of our others took the reasonable steps that are required, and that's the matter that the High Court will look at if um, the government persists in asserting that there's some problem. Again, I say we need to clear this up. We can't go on with this lingering uncertainty with the uh, constitutional legitimacy of our parliament left in doubt because the government has refused to do the right yeah, and thing. And this frustrating partisan debate that goes on and on when the public just want it resolved. Well, I don't know how you can say it's a partisan debate from Labor's point of view or the crossbenchers' point of view. We put forward a proposal which would have gone a very long way to clearing this up and the government has knocked it back. It is continuing to play partisan politics. I think what people politics. at home hear week in and week out is a partisan debate. Well, we've tried not to make it a partisan debate. We've tried very much to approach this because uh, about it's about rebuilding confidence in the, of the Australian people in the parliament. If it's not a partisan debate, why did you throw Josh Frydenberg's name into the mix? Because his mother fled persecution in Europe. He was the son of a stateless Holocaust survivor. T take it from me, Barry. Uh, I have exactly the same horror of the Holocaust in my family too. And I understand as well as anyone uh, the, the, what that horror was. We didn't single out anybody here. I referred to some, a group of Liberal MPs uh, Nola Marino, uh, jo um, uh, Mr Falinski, uh, Julia Banks, uh, Alex Hawke, uh, also Josh Frydenberg, who have not made, in a, to our mind, adequate disclosure. If a member of the public but was why, reading why their... Why did you even put him on that list in that context? Why not a bit of generosity and just leave him alone? It, it's not about... It, it's about the way the Constitution operates, and it's not for me to say, because I'm deeply sympathetic to Josh's circumstances, that the Constitution shouldn't apply to him. I'm very much hoping that he can demonstrate, by just giving some of the material facts or releasing the legal advice, that he's got nothing to be concerned about. But at the moment, his disclosure statement says nothing. It says that his mother, uh, who escaped the Holocaust, was born in 1943 uh, but, in Hungary, and that's all it says. It says that he's got legal advice, but he doesn't say what it says. But, but then you raise it and you don't put him on the list uh, for the referral. The, so, so what's the point? Uh, we've put up there four, and the crossbench has said that there should be at least four of the Liberals. There's going to be, I hope, clarity provided by Josh Frydenberg in the coming weeks. But certainly, over the next several weeks, right through until the Parliament sits again in February, uh, there's going to be this continuing uncertainty, which the government had an opportunity to come with Labor, come with a crossbench and clear up. All right, well, speaking of continuing uncertainty, Sam Dastiari's future, um, it'll now go before the Privileges Committee of the Senate. This is going to drag on. You know, the government won't let go of this one. Well, so it seems, but Sam Dastiari has paid a heavy price. He's lost his job. Uh, his 
senior position in Labor twice now in two years and uh, has made a very serious mistake and embarrassed us all. We saw um, one unnamed Labor person quoted in the Sydney Morning Herald as saying the Sam Dastyari's position is untenable. Is that a view shared well, within I, the Labor Party? He's paid a heavy price now twice. But untenable, his position to sit in the Senate is untenable. Uh, he's paid a heavy price now in losing his position twice. So do you think Bill Shorten will stand firm on this? Well, Bill Shorten's made his own view incredibly clear that he is very, very unhappy with what Sam did, with the mistake that Sam made, and that his uh, career, I think Bill's phrase was, going nowhere fast. And just finally, and it was such an historic moment this week when the same-sex marriage bill went through the...